Hi all, Eric Christensen here, pharmacist from meded101.com. Uh, thanks for listening today. I'm going to go over some type 2 diabetes medications. My contact information is there if you need to track me down. Also, feel free to subscribe at meded101.com. I'll give you updates, clinical updates. Um, Ten Commandments of Polypharmacy is a webinar that is available to all subscribers, so you can certainly go check that out. And um, yeah, what is MedEd 101? Basically, it's an initiative I created to help improve real-world medical information, medication information, uh, to help healthcare professionals. All right, let's get the meds started. You got glucophage or metformin. Most often, this is the first line diabetes medication you're going to use for type 2. Um, probably one of the most significant uh, clinical aspects about this medication is kidney function and always a classic exam question uh, for students that might be watching this is uh, what condition can potentially result uh, because of accumulation of metformin and it's lactic acidosis is the answer there. So that's why we need to kind of monitor kidney function and make sure um, that we're not getting too much of the drug. So GI side effects um, are the most common for sure. And going back to that lactic acidosis, that is very rare. Very rare does that happen. Um, what you're going to see most often uh, in, in practice is GI side effects. You know, nausea, upset stomach, loose stools, things like that. Hypoglycemia is usually not a big issue um, when used alone, so that's great. I mean, that, that's very good. And then the um, starting dose certainly matters for tolerability. I see lots of cases where, you know, we start 500 or 1,000, you know, close to 1,000 BID, 1,500, or, um, 1500 total daily dose uh, as the starting dose, and, you know, you get yourself in trouble, patients don't tolerate it, all of a sudden, it's a med that we can't use because the patient won't ever take it again. So starting dose really matters, important for tolerability to start low and, and go slow, and especially true in a geriatric patient. So finding ureas, example here, glucotrol or glipizide. The way these drugs work is they stimulate secretion of insulin by the pancreas. So what that means to you is risk of hypoglycemia. That's what we're going to be monitoring for. Uh, you want to check out those fasting sugars, things like that. Uh, elderly may get a little more dicey to use uh, this class of medications, uh, especially you know if you have some dementia, some cognitive issues. Uh, maybe that diet fluctuates quite a bit, which can complicate things. Uh, so we might need to watch those patients a little more, uh, even more closely. Uh, on sulfonylureas, but overall very cheap, uh, very um, effective in many cases. Uh, so not, not a bad drug, but that risk of, of hypoglycemia uh, is, is something to, to pay attention to there. DPP-4 inhibitors, they prolong incretin hormone, and basically what that hormone does is it promotes kind of fullness um, so it makes, makes a patient feel full or potentially helps a patient feel full and thereby reducing blood sugars that way. Also has some uh, effects on, on insulin management and, and uh, processes there too. So hypoglycemia is a possibility, typically not as bad as sulfonylureas, but when used in combination with drugs that um, increase insulin, then we, you know, have that additive effect of hypoglycemia. Overall, pretty well tolerated uh, from what, what I've seen. Uh, the big downside is um, at, the, at this point, they are um, brand name medications, so they're pretty expensive. And then something to keep in mind, some dose adjustments might be required uh, as some of them are eliminated by the kidney. The TZDs, uh, you may have heard few years back now, Avandia uh, was the bad boy that um, essentially got taken off the market. Nobody that I've ever seen 
uh, is on it anymore. Actose is the one remaining drug, or piaglitazone. It works by improving sensitivity to insulin. Um, probably the biggest clinical takeaway as far as adverse effects go, uh, edema or CHF. Uh, these drugs can worsen those situations. So we need to monitor that very closely in our, in our patients with CHF, with edema. Or if you see that prescribing cascade where you see acto started or increased, and then all of a sudden you see Lasix coming on board, you know you need to, need to think about that too. Usually dose once daily, which is a, a, a high quality advantage, you know to increase patient compliance and things like that. Some others which I personally don't see used very often. Uh, you might need to know some some oddball effects from them. Uh, every once in a while, you will stumble across them, so it's good to know them. Uh, Precos or Glyset, those are pretty limited uh, in their use because of some GI symptoms, and also they're dosed multiple times throughout the day, which, you know, patient compliance uh, can be a challenge. Invokana is kind of a newer drug. Uh, I've seen it used a few times. Uh, can cause some electrolyte issues, need to watch kind of kidney function, but uh, kind of the main effect it does is it increases glucose in the urine. So whenever you do that, you've got more sugar around and bugs like sugar. So you might need to watch out for any sort of urinary tract infection, um, things along that line uh, with that medication. Prandon Starlux stimulates insulin release, similar to sulfonylureas. Problem with these is they're frequently dosed and needs to be timed with meals. So that can can kind of present present a challenge. So uh, Prandon Starlux need to you know look out for hypoglycemia if you see these being used, uh, but then you need to to time them right as well, which can be a challenge for patients. Thanks for watching, guys. Plenty more info, meded101.com. Um, got well over 100 posts. And uh, absolutely go and subscribe and get access to that webinar. It doesn't cost you a thing. So um, you can find that on meded101.com. Thanks for listening, guys.